Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 76. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Two special guests in the building. These here is my folks. Introduce yourself to the audience. Good, Lee. Good, I'm Lee. Lolly. Cousin. Yeah, y'all yeah, ain't got to thought your governments or nothing like that. All right, that's Leak and that's G. Copy that. This here is Both Sides of the Wall, part four. Both sides of the wall, part four. Welcome home. We got to hit the rundown first, though. E Block Radio Network. Every Monday, two o'clock, E Block Radio Network. Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network. Wednesdays is 216 The Blend. That's 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com at 1230. Friday, I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And then we go Saturday to THC Media at 10 a.m. Uh, Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is my clothing line on Instagram. You follow that on Twitter at Custom Hustle Co. Custom jackets, jerseys. Uh, we got the baseball jerseys, the hockey jerseys, uh, the basketball jerseys, the jackets, the baby jackets, the baby clothes. All of that shit is in. Uh, H2H Cleaning, my cleaning company. Also follow that at H2H Cleaning. We are a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Uh, now, both sides of the wall. This is part four. Welcome home edition. Uh, we're gonna start this one off with Leek. How long was you down? How long you been home? And what's the adjustment to being coming home been? The biggest adjustment for you being home? Uh, I was down 16 and a half. I've been home nine months. And the biggest adjustment I have to say is. Being patient. For me, that's the thing is like when you come home, you want to be fast about doing everything and getting somewhere. And that's when you start to stumble when you're moving too fast. So that's the biggest thing for me is to have patience. Then again, that might not be a, an adjustment because being inside there, if you don't develop patience, I mean, you ain't got a chance of getting out. Right. Well, so, not the difference in that patience that you're talking about is. You get you feel like you got to catch up, play catch up for the last sixteen and a half, and trying oh, to make no. everything happen all in one swoop. Yeah, but see, but it ain't about playing catch up because that's the one thing I do have in my mind that I'm not trying to play catch up. What's gone, what's missed is missed. So, good. So like that's not I ain't even like thinking about that. But like coming home and trying to do things right. And that's the kind of patience I'm talking about, not be in the rush to, okay, you come home and at my age, it's like, I want, I feel though I should already have at my age. But coming home, just starting life again at my age, the thing about the patience is you see everything. And there ain't so much as, damn, I want that, I want that. It's just that you feel though like, damn, I'm a grown man, so I got to have my own. I don't want to be on nobody else's time. Mm-hmm. Like as far as the adjustments, as far as I'm saying, we're men and we wasn't born in jail. And for some of some of us that got that mental and emotional fortitude, like we ain't got to worry about coming out here. And as far as the adjustments, things we've got to live life. We've been out here living. So for some of us that that ain't you know stuck, stepping outside of that place and letting that shit go. It's kind of easy. Just let it go. I feel you. I feel that. You know what I mean, for some of us, like, but once we out of there, because our minds, some of us, our minds wasn't, we wasn't stuck in there anyway. We always thought about getting out here. You know what I mean? So for some of us, it's like stepping out here, it's like, okay, that's behind us. Our focus is here. You know what I mean? But the biggest adjustment for her might be just to, like in there, you're around everything and you're stuck in the middle of everything because you're living with everybody in them blocks, in, in that box. So out here now, like it's easier to remove yourself from situations. I mean, and you ain't got to be around people that you don't want to be around that you don't like or people that don't like you or that hate you. So but the biggest thing adjusted out here is to basically not get involved. 
it in a lot of things. As far as you coming home and you miss so much time in relationships that you're used to having with certain people, with family, with friends and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff has changed because they've been out here living. So the biggest adjustment is to realize that even for the people who were in contact with you out there, the biggest adjustment is that when you get out here, your relationship with everybody is different. All right, G, you go in on that one now. Yeah, um, yeah, G, I was down, I was down 14 years. Um, I've been home two years now. Um, I feel like I'm doing fairly well. My biggest adjustment was basically, and to piggyback off some of the things Leak, Leak was talking about, my, my biggest adjustment was just how fast everything was, you know, because it's like I don't have enough time in the day to do any like all Mute your right, camera until you're going to talk, Lee. That, huh? Oh, how you do your camera that? until you're going to talk. Would I just hit it? Yeah. Just, just hit the mute. the mute button. Yeah. Oh, the mute. music in the background. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Um, just not having the time of the day because when you when, when I was okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> you can't oh, find it. Don't I worry got about it. it. We good. We this good. is what happens when niggas just come home, y'all. They don't be used to second and shit. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, like I like I was saying, man, like you know, when when, when you're away, man, you really you 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 if you smart anyway, you, you start planning things, right? And 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 you plan to do this, plan to do that. And a lot of times you try to set out to plan something and it doesn't go that way. Like, you know, you come out here, you might have expectations. People have been telling you this, telling you that. Like, I got you. And you come out here and then it's not none of that. It's like, it's not none of that stuff, man. So you really have to adjust to the, the speed of life, how how fast life is moving. And then also the expectation that you had, the failures of people actually not having those things that you thought that you was going to get from them. So for me, that was that was easy because... I never really wanted to depend, even when I was away, I never depended on people too much. I, I you know, I, you know that I never try to lean on people too much. And you, you pretty much, you roll with me the whole way through, you know what I mean? And it would be more so, damn, send me some pictures, this, that, and the third. So I really don't, I pretty much not, don't try not to, uh, you know, rely on people so much. But, you know, you would think that, Guys be selling you all these dreams, you might come out here and it's not that. So you really gotta like put your grown man shorts on out here and really, you know what I mean, buckle in and adjust to that. But um just just how fast life was for me and how everyone is different. Nobody is really like, you know, shorties that was out here, they're grown now. They're they're not little kids anymore. They're grown now. And you know, you here you are um coming out here, grown man. Cause I was away, like I said, 14 years. So coming out here, man. You know, sometimes you can have that same mentality as being young, but then you got to realize, like, everything is really different and you just have to adjust to all of that. And so, man, that's really it for me. All right. So um, now let me give it to y'all from the – this is why it's both sides of the wall. Now let me give it to you from the other side. Uh, one, if you know me, like G said, I'm going to take the whole ride type of nigga. Uh, I'm not just – I'm we're not just brothers and all of that while we home and everything's good. You know what I'm saying? While the niggas is down, you don't act like they disappeared and fell off the face of the earth. That's just the way I look at shit. Uh, um, but this is why I never tell, both of y'all could attest to this, I never tell you I can do or am going to do nothing if I can't do it. If you tell me, yo, I need $50 for whatever, if I got it, and I'm going to tell you, all right, look, when I when it land on Thursday, I'm going to send it. When it land on Tuesday, I'm going to send it. If I ain't got it, though, I'm not going to tell you that it's coming. That way you don't, like you said, niggas Selling you a dream, building up them expectations, and now you sitting in a, you in a bad situation. The adjustment for us on the adjustment for us on the other side is reintegrating you into our everyday life. Mm. In a situation where with y'all now, Leak, I was talking to Leak every damn day. I talked to Leak probably two, three times a day sometimes. <laughs> so me and him was still like on the phone all the time, and I'm still maneuvering and all of that, able to still talk to him. Because I know, all right, when he called, it's cool. Me and you was more so on the paper. We was more so on the letters type time. Yeah, yeah. we jump on the phone every now and again. But even then, like, I came up and seen you a couple times and all of that. But mm -hmm. it's actually going like, damn, because, you know, when a nigga in jail, you know you're going to hear from him. And certain, I know for me, 
I know I'm going to hear from you a certain amount of times. Then you got to readjust to like, well, damn, I ain't talked to Leak in two, three weeks. I tell this nigga every day. You know what I'm saying? But you got to readjust and also understand that he got kids and all of that that he got to readjust to. He got different situations to readjust to. Leak, we're using this video. Niggas are going to be killing you for eating on camera. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just said, the day G came home, as soon as we got done the podcast, I ran straight up and go seeing G. I ain't seen G since he came home, since that day. Now the shutdown happened the next week and all of that, but it's the same. Yeah, situation. that was crazy. I came, I came out here and, and basically got locked. Right. You came up. home Sunday. You came home Sunday <laughs> and by like Thursday. It was like, no, nigga, don't go outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, it's an adjustment for us too, though. Like, just trying to put you back into the space of like, damn, I ain't talked to him or I can talk to him. Or I can go see him or. You got your own everyday shit going on that like it's kind of hard to readjust and you know put niggas back into the in the play like they've been. Now this is what I need to know though too the adjustment for coming home as a parent, coming home parenting after fourteen years on this side of the wall. Now you home. Sheesh. What's that adjustment like? Sheesh. You take that one first, G. Man, that for me has probably been the toughest man um so the children that 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 my two children my two daughters they're grown now man and so i i have so one of them is 20 and one of them is 21 and man my 21 year old man she 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 kind of give me hell i ain't gonna hold you because her thing is yeah, this. So that's six so that's six and seven then yeah when you fall Exactly. And yeah, you saw they babies and now you like they grown women. <laughs> no, that's that's they were she was four because I've been home. You gotta remember I've been home. Oh, two right. years. Copy, copy, copy. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So and and you know, I still was I still had you know interaction with them away, but it's still it's still not the same. They, they're it's being raised the under the tutelage of their mother more so than me, you know what I mean? So it's just trying. To, what, what Leek? Oh, I can't even see. Leek is homie in this. <laughs> I can't even see. I can't see. Oh, I'm gonna see you like. But, e Block Radio Network Monday two o'clock. The video is up, y'all. Y'all gotta go check this video out to see Leek homie in these eggs like he just got <laughs> off the bus. Go but, ahead though. <laughs> yeah, man. She um, she 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 in that zone where she want to touch me like she wanna she wanna like. Well, you you haven't been here. Like she loves me, but it's still the same. And you know, she called me for money. That's cool. She got that part together. But as far as me saying certain things, she's real mouthy. So that adjustment for me has been really tough, man. You know, just this this child that was a baby now coming coming out here now she's grown. Mm -hmm. I'm saying she's see in the state that you caught her too. Yeah, uh, you say twenty and twenty one. Is yeah. you know between like 15, 16 to like twenty five is I'm smelling myself all through these years because right. it's like I gotta I gotta assert myself as an adult even though you ain't right. even an adult in the beginning of that stage and then it's like well I gotta establish the fact that I'm an adult and like you say again it's the adjustment of fourteen years you was here but you wasn't here exactly. so like you said you hey, go from I, four, I, mean, you, I go you, from four to an adult. And I'm a whole different person. Now we got to relearn each other. We got to adjust to each other and try to relearn each other and become have a whole different relationship than we ever had. Exactly. And and that and that's the process that we're going through now. It's like just basically trying to relearn each other, just just trying to have set boundaries and have respect for each other because you know I'm I'm you know I'm off, I'm off that old principle like you're not gonna disrespect me in no kind of way. So yeah, I'm not your friend. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, ain't I have that very well established with my kids. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so like you know I can get a little tough if need be, but I still want her to be able to have that voice, have that space to say what she feels because I understand it, it is some resentments held there. You know, some things that she had had to go through that I wasn't able to help her out with. You know, her she, seeing her some of her friends just have other friends uh, uh, do things with their parents. They're both of their parents, and her not being able to do that. So, I get it. My, my, my her sister isn't that bad. Like you know, me and her, you know, we don't go through that those type of things. But the adjustment mainly with her is that 
I don't really want to get too much in her business, but she she deals with some um how the society is today. She deals with some. I don't really want to put her business out there. Yeah, copy. I mean, we ain't got to personalize too much. Yeah, copy. Yeah. But she deals with some of the things that society accepts today, right? That's her thing, and I have to be like, because I don't come from that. Yeah, you know I come I mean? from a different generation where, yeah, this is not cool. Just because people are accepting and doing all kinds of goofy shit doesn't exactly. mean that I have to be down. And so I just, <laughs> I just try to love her and parent to her um, through that and just love her regardless because I don't want to be the one who be like, oh, just because I'm not for that or just because that's not what I'm about or, I, I'm, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't raised that way. You go ahead. I, I can't feed her to the wolves. I still have to be her father, especially me being away for so long, I really can't be the one who feeds it to the woods. Like, I ain't with none of that. So I got to set that. You can't, you can't show me who you are and I decline it after being gone for all this time because in that, in that stage, now we have no relationship. Exactly. Now this is this is not even my child. This is just like, this is a lost situation. Yeah, so, and and, and I deal with it and I told her, like, you know, it's going to be tough, to, you know, things that she... Finish that said, bite up, Leek. It'll be tough. Yeah, I'm about to throw it over to you anyway. I, I wish I could see her. I, I can only imagine you probably over here acting crazy. <laughs> but so now we on to you, Lee. Yeah, what was the question? It. Now we on to you. Now the, the adjustment of a parent coming after sixteen, after sixteen being down, and now you come back home. What was the adjustment for parenting from one side of the wall to the other? No, the biggest adjustment for me is that see when I got booked. I had a son that was one month old, a daughter three months old, and two on the way. So my kids' whole lives, I was in jail. So they were dealing from dealing with me, our relationship for those six and a half years with the father and that's in jail. They didn't know me as a man and as a father out here. So the biggest adjustment that still is that we just getting over it, is that this is no longer a visitor room phone call or video call relationship. They've dealt with me for all those years from a distance through gates and bars. Fitch so now, intervals and all of that type stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I watched them grow up basically in pictures. And, you know what I mean? And shit like that. I was there for nothing. So now, being out here, the biggest adjustment is that they don't know me in person, they knew me on the phone. It was easier for them to deal with. The biggest thing with me, like right now, is like when they need things, they still find it hard, except for one of my daughters, <laughs> well, to right ask there. me for stuff. <laughs> I mean, when they need stuff and all that kind of stuff, they're still a little hesitant okay. about saying, call up and saying, Dad, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's mostly, you know, their mom saying, well, you know, um, he needs this and he's going to need that. I know he probably ain't asked you, but I'm going to tell you. Because they don't feel comfortable asking me for stuff. Now, on the phone, in jail, when they was young and all that, you know, as a kid, well, you know, kids at certain age, no matter where you at, rather you're in jail, you're out there, where you at, when they're a certain age, like, daddy is daddy no matter what. Daddy is like a superstar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it don't even matter about certain stuff. But like, they'll ask you for anything. They'll say anything. But out here now, in person, like I'm still, I'm a stranger to them when it comes to dealing with them in person. They're not used to me coming to me to ask me for money or to ask me advice about this and that and that kind of shit. You know what I mean? That's not what they're used to. So the biggest adjustment with my kids is dealing with them, having a personal relationship with them in person and not over the phone. It's like relearning, you know? Yeah, you definitely got to relearn them because like you said, two of them wasn't born and two of them was uh, a couple of months old. So like, right. they don't they don't have any, they don't got no memory of none of that. Like, so now this is another thing I want to ask y'all about because these are all of the things that we touched on both sides of the wall, parts one through three. Relationships. 
how you find dealing in relationships, the adjustments to dealing in the relationships once you came home versus being on the other side. Let's Take that one, Leek. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, G. Now, what happened? Said, this said, question? Go ahead, relationships. G. When you was on, it was uh, relationships with females. What's the adjustment to the relationships with females coming home now? Because, like, one of the things we talked about on the first part of both sides of the wall was it's so easy to let relationships go just because you can't really focus on them too much because you really focused on you because when you're down, that's all you got is you. So it's like, how, how has that adjustment been after coming home all this time to trying to deal in different relationships? All right, I'm going to keep it like, all right, this was the biggest adjustment for me for as far as relationships, as far as, especially from people that you didn't have those kind of relationships with before you went to jail. Like, when you start dealing with somebody in an intimate way while you're in jail, there's certain things that you can't account for being around them in person. I mean, all you know them by is to visit around the phone and pictures. So then when you come home, it's a total different thing for being around a person, like physically being around a person. You're learning brand new things about them that you couldn't account for over the phone, two letters, and a couple of hours in a visit. You know what I mean? So the attraction becomes different. For years, you might have been attracted to this person. Then when you came home, and you got to be around the person, the attraction has a way. It's like you see a person now in their own element, and it's like, damn, everything is, ain't as peaches and cream as you thought it was. You understand what I'm saying? In them situations, too, you got to understand whenever they come in to see you, talk to you, or any of that, this is all I'm going to get from you. So I'm presenting myself as the best possible version of myself. Now you catch me on a random Wednesday, like, hey, this just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the adjustment, too, for you that you got to make to now that it ain't just she got on the best perfume she got. You know what I'm saying? She got on the best outfit and all of that. Like she can't present herself as a as nobody can present themselves as the best version of themselves every single day. It's gonna yeah, be Tuesday. That, it's right. gonna be Wednesday from time to time. Yeah, but I understand that, right? But that's not the issue. The issue is like you present yourself as this. But it's the same thing with dudes, because dudes be in there presenting themselves as this, but then when they come out. It's that. So it's vice versa. The biggest thing is for me coming home in a relationship, I would advise against coming home, being in, especially doing, I can't speak for everybody else's situation. Everybody else's situation is completely different. But for a person that's went away as long as I went away, life and everything has changed completely in 16 and a half years. You know what I mean? Everything has changed. So when you come home, you need to learn the world as it is today. You, it's like if you come home and you're dedicated to someone else and their way of life and what's going on with them, when you come out here, you're trying to go at your own pace. You want your own situations. And like... Depending on who the woman is, who the female is, she'll think that you're coming home to be walk the line that she's walking. Like, they think it's selfish of you when you call and be like, well, hold up. I need to see the world with my own eyes. That don't mean I can't, can't see the world, world through the eyes that you've got for me. I got to look at it myself. Yeah, fa- exactly. that's something we talked about. Uh, false, yeah, ex- you- false expectations of. All these false expectations do is make you fail yourself because you expected something of me that I didn't put that in your mind. You put that in your own mind. Yeah. I agree to that too, man. Um, You done, Leak? I bet. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm go sure. ahead. He's, Leak's uh, chewing. Go ahead. Leak's- um, <laughs> I, I, I would definitely second that, man. Um, Like what he said, like give yourself a, give yourself a chance. The thing is, though, to be honest, right, if you if you a decent person, if you a decent dude, if you was in there 
for some time and you had somebody rocking with you, right? And then you come out here, you're gonna almost feel obligated. You feel what I'm saying? If she held yeah. you down and she she was there and she was doing things with you, you're gonna feel out. You should as a man because you know this individual, you know, broke up back to get up here to see you. You know, at, at times probably put money on that that those books for you, whatever the case may be. You know, she she was riding with you, so of course she's gonna have certain expectations. But in my experience, I know exactly what leap means. You know what I mean? It, it's things that you really can't. It's, it's things that you really can't um um calculate. You know what I mean? Coming out here because I I mean one of the chick that I was dealing with, man. You know, you can tell me she came up every time she came up. She, you know, she was garbed up, looked clean, this, that, and the third. And when I, when I get to her house, you know what I mean? I ain't getting to the lane. When I get to her house, house was filthy. You know, it, it was it was a lot of things that I didn't take in consideration that I actually would dislike. And I wasn't looking for an excuse because I actually tried to come home and bang it out. Like, you know, just to me and a good, but I, I feel like I got to agree with Leek because when you come home, you got to, you, you need to, you need to be able to view the whole world. It's going to be so many different things that's going to start to come at you. And the women, you know, they, they, they see you and then, you, you know, you come out, you got your glow on, you, you know I mean? They, they, these dudes out here burnt out doing this and doing that. And you come out and you, you know, you glow and you doing your thing. So that stuff is going to, those temptations going to come at you through all angles from all sides. And it's, it's really that some, um, some people was able to like beat that, that status quo, or as far as like, you know, dudes can't come home and be with the women that was in there, but not many, not many people, people can do it, man. It's really tough. So, you know. All right. So this is one thing, cause I always try to throw disclaimers cause you don't want somebody to listen and hear something that you ain't saying. Ladies, if you're dealing with somebody in jail, it's nothing wrong for you to have expectations because everybody has expectations of everybody in any relationship. You got expectations of your friends or your girlfriends or your guy friends, however. But for you to come home and say like, well, when G come home, he going to do this and he going to do that. Then you messing up the whole situation because he got to readjust to the whole situation in life. And it can't just be about how you wanted it to be because that's what it was. Like you're also saying though now when Dudes will feel obligated to Shorty was rocking with me for a dime. Damn, I gotta, you know, show her some type of love when I come home. But like Leek is saying though now, like you just said too, once I come home and now I'm around you every day, and it's like that attraction might not be there. Like you said, I come in and the house is dirty. That's a, a huge joint. Like if I come in and the situation ain't right, like I just came from a, especially when you was up top. When you was up top, you kept your situation clean, Absolutely. neat, and all of that. So when you come in, the first thing you notice is why is that on the floor? <laughs> how come my, them shoes ain't the, the, first, them thing, shoes the ain't, first thing I noticed shoes is why do smell like that in here? That's what I that's what <laughs> copy. But again, that all goes back to presenting yourself as your best self in these intervals. If I'm gonna come yeah. see you on this game, it's gonna be two hours. I can present myself as my best self for these two hours. 15 yeah. minutes on the phone, I can be my best self. You don't know she cussing the kids out every time you hang the phone up. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what type of mom she is. You don't know what type of sister, type of daughter, because you ain't getting all of that. Only thing you yeah. get on the phone is just her side of the story. Yeah, but I mean, you definitely can't let say one last thing because I don't want to. I, I don't want to leave it out there like that either. Um, yeah, man, you like it's, you, it. It can happen. I just feel like, like, like Lee said, you did so much time. And you didn't really, I didn't really even give myself a chance because I wanted to make it work. I didn't take in consideration the attitude. And, and for the, sometimes the women, they really, you know, they don't, they don't take, they don't take in consideration. Like the other side of it is that they don't think about how jealous that they're going to be when you're coming out here and you're getting so much attention. And it's like, I don't have all the exact time I used to have when I was away. Exactly. That messes them up because they feel like, well, we're like, like you know, my shorty was starting to say, well, where was all these people at when he was away? And I and I was like, well, listen, it's it's going to fade out. You know, we had like a little party for me, 
And like, you know, it, it, it faded out. Like, but she just was feeling like, I don't get enough time. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm coming to be with you at night. So like, I, I just got to do this. Like people come and it's going to be a little attention. I, I'm still here with you. Just let me navigate what's going on. And we was like doomed from the rip because she was like, I don't know. Fuck that! All these people. But this is the, this is the, I mean. this is the same thing in any relationship, though. How relationships will fail is I had a whole life before I met you. I knew whoever this girl or this guy is for 15, 20, 30 years before I met you. Like we could have been together for three years, and it's like, well, where was he or she at? Like, yeah, but I knew him twenty five years. I knew her for twenty five years. Like that's my folks. Like, and yeah. people never seem to want to understand that and want to capitulate to that, which is dumb. Hey, um, hey, but you know what, though? Excuse me. Go ahead. Just to elaborate on that point, like you said, right? When we sitting in a joint, like, we get in the phone every day, every day, we talking, and we're in jail. So all we have is time. Mm -hmm. So you deal with somebody out there, they're used to phone calls every day, and the business and all that, they're used to getting they're used to having as, as much access to you as they're allowed to have with your ability to contact and communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So when you come out here and it's like, I'm working there and I can't call you or I can't talk on the phone while I'm driving this truck. Mm -hmm. This and that. So if I can't pick up my phone now, whatever you call, is an issue. If my mm -hmm. work schedule or anything else that I got going on is different from what you're used to as far as the access that you have for me, have to me, it's like now it's a problem. It's like, first and foremost, like he said, when we come home, especially if we do a long time, you got somebody rocking with you for a long time, on and off, whatever, you feel obligated to say, damn, I got to look into this. I got to see if I can make this work because she invested exactly. so much time and energy into me. Yeah, copy. No, Everybody but, understand but, but that. Then, but then the problem comes when, wait a minute, it's like he said, like, first thing with me is I don't like as a me too old for me to have to tell a grown woman about a smell in her house or her house being dirty or this and that right there. That kind of shit is complete turn off. I mean, that, 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 that's from the door. A trifling ass woman. Fuck that. Excuse me, yeah, I'm serious. Uh, I mean, copy. At, at any age, if you walk in and the house don't smell right, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. we, it can't No, but you know, we, listen, 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 listen up. When you a young boy, certain things you don't care. Uh, so all you going in the house for is for certain things anyway. We done all been up to smell your houses. Diff get some. Different situations. Exactly. If it's just a, if it's a bust, if it's a bust down for the moment, then you probably didn't care at exactly. 18. But if see, you but, really, if you really liked her though, and you came in that house at eighteen and it didn't smell right, you would have went, "Damn!" Like I thought you was this and you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like even at eighteen, no, you, you gonna think say, that you, you, you might say, "Damn, the house messed up." So about I'm still here with her though. I didn't <laughs> say you wasn't still gonna tag, but you thought she was this and she that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying as an adult, though, when you come in here and you see, nah, yeah, certain, copy I'm gonna give you a problem yeah. example. I'm gonna give you a problem yeah, example. Of other things that, as you see as a man now, that you didn't give a fuck about when you was young. Like, who they are as a parent. Like, this person could be as thorough as oh, all yeah, boys in every, in every other way. But then when you see how they interact with their kids, yeah, the things that they do for their kids and all that stuff, and how like you hear them say certain things with their, in relation to, to their kids, like, if they belittle them, all they demean them, if they talk to right. them all kinds of reckless, yeah. That's why no, not that. just that. No, 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 not just that. For instance, if it's always thrown in the kid's face about, I do this for you, I do that for you. Your father ain't in your life, so if I don't do this and I don't do that, then you ain't got this, you ain't got that. Okay, you're the mother. Now, let's get something straight. A lot of us leave half fit. A lot of us have put our BMs and all that in certain situations by getting locked up. Well, you just got a bunch of suckers out here that's dead beats that don't care. And so the burden of a woman to be mommy and dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I'm talking about in the situations where it's always been thrown into the child's face about your father ain't here. 
I do this or I do that. And then the pictures you're painting to everybody outside the world is like you're taking care of this child and giving this child and doing this and so much. So like you might got a 16 year old daughter. She might got a 16 year old daughter. And to me and you, she's telling her how she's the only one doing everything. We think she take care of this child, step blah, blah, blah. Until you have the conversation with the child one on one. I'm like, man, I can't point to nothing in here in the last three years that my mom has bought for me. Yeah, I live in our house. She go shopping, she buy the food, she provide this, ass. she work, bust her ass, to keep it roof, roof, where I am, all that. But all that she's taking care of me, the way she's telling people she's taking care of me, tell her to come in here and point to anything that she's paid for in here. I went out here and got this shit on the lane. Doing things I might shouldn't have have to do at 14 and 15. Mm. Because she ain't doing it. My dad ain't around. He ain't doing it. But the, but the things that the picture, the, the picture that mom was painting about how she doing all this and all that, it ain't true. But when I come out and say something like that, and I say, my mom ain't take care of me, people are hot down that child's throat. So oh, your mom do everything for you. Because that's the perception. That's the way the mom makes it face. But the mom always done up. Got fresh clothes on, this and that, to go out party on the weekends when she ain't that's working. The, that's that B. That's the BS Instagram shit, man. That's the stuff. I hate that type shit. <laughs> oh, I hate them type people. Uh, mom yeah. or dad, you fucking nut. If you're listening to this, you're a nut. Yeah, but appreciate you but hitting the button, but you're a nut. Yeah, but the biggest thing for me, for like I said, every situation is different as far as relationships come over each other. But what I'm going to tell you is that you cannot overlook the fact that when everything that goes on, that relationship while you're in jail with this person over the phone the person is thinking that everything will be remain the same and she's used to get all your attention especially if she's riding and riding the right way yeah. so when you come home and if that attention is not solely on her it ain't about another chip or nothing like that it could be your job. It could be your family. It could be this and that. Yeah, it's just that you're not all about me. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, that, okay. that, that, that adjustment definitely changes because they don't take in consideration that once you come out here, you, you, you're a different person now. Because I'm not this, like, you, it's not that you're changing on them. It's I'm able to do different things now. So I have room for growth. Yeah, so now I can do I, all this just, stuff. Just my I can talk to home. I can talk to my mom or my man for longer than 15 minutes now. Like yeah. I can and go I'm pull up on him and go like, see him. Like, it's like now, it's like now I don't have to depend on certain things. I can go and get them done. And you don't gotta depend now because sometimes I I I'll believe I believe that that some women I think when they dealing with somebody in jail, I think that they, they like the fact that this person so it depends on you. Yes, yes, you, you have those type of people out there. Yes. Yeah, it kind of depends on kind of needs them. And then when you then then when if I don't need you in that manner no more, you feel like I'm changing. But it's it's not that I'm changing, it's just a simple fact that the roles is changing now. I the tables is turned now. I can do for you now. I, you don't gotta do these things for me. Like I'm, a, I can, I can take care of these things for you now. And it, and it kind of like when they lose that 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 power, power. that control, yeah. You know, sometimes right. you know for some women, but it's not all women. I mean, it's different. Women, man. I got one more thing before we wrap this one up. Um, uh, hold on. Just tell me this. Now that you're home, what's the goal? Now that you're home, the goal. Yeah, what's your goal now that you're home? My goal is still like the same as it was before I got out here, is to get myself in a position like I'm home, I'm working, I'm doing all right, I'm progressing. But at the same time, there isn't, you know, there wasn't a platform for me to come out here and say, hey, we're pitting you on this right here, so all you got to do is step take a few steps to the left or take a few steps forth or back and you can go ahead and, and, and be what you want to be. No, it's still a grind. Just a grind of legal. Like I'm out here and I'm working and all that, but I still haven't found the job that's going to say, okay, you're set. Yeah, you know I mean, I still haven't got a career. I mean, and now, mind you, I'm being patient. I'm not in a rush because 
even though I'm 45 years old, I don't feel as though like my time is dwindling. I don't feel as though like I gotta be in a rush to do and have everything. No, I'm still day by day, step by step. So my goal is just to continue progressing and keep my eyes open until I do get that job or other opportunity that can put me in a position to not only have and get my own, but also to be able to do more as far as supporting my kids and doing the shit that, that, that I need to do for them. Because my kids are at that age now, they're 60, they're 16 to 17. And by the end, next few months, all four of them will be 17, going to be juniors and seniors at school. So over the next few years, I have to have to be able to support them as they go through college or whatever else. You're going to get cracked on that you know prom I mean? head. <laughs> so, like, so like, Yo, I'm sitting here thinking like, did he just say he got all, they oh, yeah, all the yeah, same he, age? He was only yeah, home. All that, say, he was only home. All my kids is born stretch. in 05. <laughs> all, all my kids is born in 05. Do you remember Leek was only home for that little stretch? So he about to get cracked for the prom. <laughs> like, you know I, mean? yeah, so I just I just but, did a uh, fucking graduation. Uh, when I was like, great to say, hey, cuz, listen, you hear me? Yeah. I got to run and shoot to my my, 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 uh, my my car real fast, right? Go ahead. We almost done. Go ahead. And, uh, it's raining out here now, right? It's raining hard. And it's the fourth phone. I don't need the fifth phone. Go ahead, nigga. Go months. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so like, I love y'all. She, I, like I will be at y'all. You will definitely be out of your mean, bro. I'm going to hit you when we get done, Leek. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, my slam. All right, hey, G, cl- cl- close this out for us, G. What's the, what's your goal uh, now that you're home? Um, my goal is just to be the best version of myself, man, that I can possibly be, man. Like, I have to be – I'm not putting no crazy pressure on myself, but I, I know that I have to be 10 times better than what I was. Because I'm a different person. I have a different mindset. And that's that's the thing that changed me, man. That's the thing that made me actually elevate. Like I said, I, I came out here and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn or like that, but I, I came out here and you know what I mean? I was able in a short, a short period of time surpass a lot of people that's been out here. That's been out here for a nice little bit of time. You know what I mean? Being so, it's having my own space and having a couple of vehicles and just like, you know, working and creating, you know, my um, carpet cleaning thing too, yeah, you know. Throw that, hey, throw that name out there, yo. Yeah, oh, uh, that's GLS underscore carpet underscore cleaning. All right, know, so hold up. That's my IG joint, but, um, huh? Hold up, before we even go here, because I hate yeah. that you just said this. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. Toot your own fucking horn. Because if you don't right. do it, ain't nobody else going to do it. Feel good right. and be proud of the shit that you're doing and that you accomplished. Don't let nobody else's, don't let somebody else's small mindedness belittle the shit that you're doing. You know True. what I'm saying? You yeah. got to big up your own situation if you want other people to believe in your situation. No, absolutely. I just so always like this. Don't, you can be humble and also, yeah, it's I like not bragging. Just it's stay not, in that it's humble not, zone. But it's not bragging if these are the facts. Yeah, when I tell no people, doubt. when I tell people now, you can Google my name. You can Google hype and all of my shit to come up. That's not me yeah. bragging. I work hard for this shit. I work hard for my shit to come up this way. You exactly. know what I'm saying? No doubt, everybody bro. can't, everybody with a podcast can't say or do that. But yeah, I can. No so yeah. don't never feel like you gotta throw the disclaimer because if you don't know me, you don't know me, and that's cool. But yeah. I'm not saying this. I'm saying I say these things. I throw out all of the stuff that I'm doing and all them radio stations and all that in the beginning to yeah. show you. That this stuff ain't hard, and you can easily accomplish the same shit that I'm doing. It can get done, right? Yeah, but I'm not going sugarcoat and go like, "Oh man, well you know, just another radio announcement." No, nah, nigga, I got another radio announcement. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. So pat, your, pat sure. yourself on the back about that shit, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like I, I'm definitely grateful, man. And um, um, like you said, man, I, I am proud of things, but I don't. It's 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 another thing with that with me too. I don't want to feel like. I'm good because I, I still feel like it's so much more growing and so much getting better and the deal that I had to do. And like I said, the, the thing that helped me out, man, and for everyone who's listening, who probably went away or just who's been home and that pretty much can't like get out of this rut. It's about mindset, man. You got to change your mindset. You got to, you know, have a mindset. First is about your spirituality. You got to, you know, you got to believe in God, whoever you believe in. You got to have that. 
with you, but you just you definitely got to have this mindset of saying, you know, I'm going to do this and nothing is going to really stop me from getting to this point. And I feel like if you are able to like really get that faith and that, you know, that, that courage to do that, things will start happening. And also for me is the people that I hang around. Like I don't really hang around no one that's, that's that, that everyone I'm hanging around with pretty much is doing better than me. And I can say that, like I hang around all the people that I deal with, everyone that I hang around with, you know, I, I'm probably at the lowest. I mean, I'm hanging around some people that's really doing good in life. And it's cool because I I already know that I will be that person, you know, getting to that next I'll be able stage. to reach these. Yeah, it's one of them things I always say. If you're the smartest nigga in the room, get out the building. Yeah, <laughs> so it, definitely, man. And all that stuff that we hear, those sayings and stuff, like all that stuff is true, man, because I'm really living proof, man. I'm really living proof that, you know, when people counted me out, man, people thought that really I wasn't going to be able to uh, uh, succumb what I went through, man, which was crazy and it was vicious. I, I knew in the back of my mind and in my heart that I had a place and that God had something in store for me. And, you know, I came out here and, I and, you know, I'm showing it. But that's the goal for me, bro. Like, real rap. Cause like, you know, we talk all, you know, we talk when we can talk. We haven't been talking as much as we can, but. Our, our mindsets don't never really change when we get to, you know, sharpen each other still and we talk about these businesses that we want to do. And it's, it's always for the, the greater development of ourselves and our family. And that's just never going to change for me, man. That's really what it is, man. And I'm going to constantly keep pushing forward. And like one of us going, one of us going to get there, of course. And we already know once it happened, which we're better, we should happen. But, you know, so that's, that's, that's really it, man. Um, I'm proud of you, man. I want to give you your flowers, man. I want to. I want to tell you how how proud of you I am because, like I said, man, you you just you know, it was crazy. Like you 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 you're younger than me. So when we when we started growing up, we didn't necessarily hang around each other. Like you know, what I mean, when you started coming when you was able to come off the steps. You started coming around, and then you was around us. But you know, you you a few years younger than me, so you wasn't necessarily my age group. Of course, mm -hmm. when you got older, you became my age group. But you know what I'm saying. And the crazy thing is, no one, no, I, I would never think that you would be the one that when, 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 when I fell and things got tough for me, you would be the one who stepped up and was there consistently. So I appreciate that, man. Ain't too many people like you, cause and you know that. And I always tell you, none of our brothers, none of our bros that we grew up with, I don't think not too many of them is exactly like you. And I love all all our homies, man. But I gotta give you yours, man. Like you. You really cut from a different breed, man. And you really like just held it down for me and and, and kept me breathing and alive at, at times. Even though it's only like I say, send me some pictures, bro. Like I said, you like and you will say it. Like if you ain't had no bread, you will send a bread when you had to. But if you had no bread, you say, listen, I ain't got no bread for you, but I got some flicks. I'm gonna send you some flicks right there. You know what I mean? So and that stuff gets you through, though, right? That stuff really got you to the next level, man, to the next phase of what you was going through in there, man. So I love you, man. I appreciate you for that, man. I really do. I just want to just give you your flowers, man. And um, you definitely a role model. You got the, the the clothing thing going on. You got the podcast. I mean, you like you got you got the, the, the cleaning company going on. You got just holding things down for the family and then for the second version of the family, which is the friends you holding. Man, I definitely appreciate you and, and love you for that. I uh, love you too. Um, it's one of them things, I know podcast drive through, y'all. We try to keep it short and sweet, but when the shit is good, you got to let it go. Uh, before I close it out, though, this is one of them things I always try to tell people is you never know who's watching. And for those who don't know, I've never known life without knowing G. We grew up right next door to each other. So there's never been a time that I didn't know him. Now... It's why I always say that, though, about you don't know what the little boy, the little girl across the street, next door, whatever, how they view you and what they see in you when you just going about it. So when you 16 to in my eyes, you reek, ream, y'all is the top of the top. Like yeah. Jay, RPJ, because Jay was too. Like, yeah, no doubt. Y'all was the top of the top because y'all was like, these niggas, these niggas is grown men. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. You never know just them little things that you throw at the young boy. This is why I always will try the young boys. I always will try to give them something positive. Say something to them. The young boys down the street selling water ice. Give me a water ice for everybody in here. The young boys are just standing out here. Here go a dollar. 
just because you yeah. never know what it is that you're doing and how you moving is going to affect them. And like you said, now we come back years later when you, you come back around and it's like, well, damn, yeah, now we're a little older, now we get a little closer. But damn, I still can remember 1994, 1992. Exactly. You might not remember certain shit that happened back then because it wasn't that deep to you. But as a mm. kid, it mm. was everything to you. Yeah, so you got to when you hold on to those certain things, like I said, you never know who's watching. And I never feel like I never want nobody to feel like if I say if I love you, I really fuck with you like that. Pictures was three me spending three dollars just to send these joints up. Yeah, I might not have 50 that you asked for, but I got six dollars. I can send you 20 pictures. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But even mm-hmm. then, it's I can send you, I can send you ten, I can send Leak ten, I can send whoever else. You know what I'm saying? But that's the my, that was always my whole thing. It was like uh, definitely appreciate that, man. You no, know, definitely you leave, you leave nobody behind, and if we all came together, we all got to leave out of here together. But okay. that's episodes. What was was this, this one? Seventy six, y'all. Appreciate y'all hitting the button. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.